Hello, 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 and welcome to the Drag Race recap here on Reality TV Rehap Ups. I'm your host, Liana Boris, and today we're going to be talking about episode three of RuPaul's Drag Race season 16. We had our first queen eliminated. We had a ball both had having fun and literally a ball. We have so many looks to go through. We will talk about every single one. If you're watching the YouTube version, we've got images, the one-stop shop to go through all of the looks for this week. Yeah, yes, it was a lot. I'm like overwhelmed by, <laughs> by all the looks, by all the drama, all the queens. And thankfully, I'm not alone. We have our wonderful panel here to help me break everything down. First, let me welcome in Amon Adwin. Amon, how are you? Yes, I love the episode where they all come together. I'm great. I'm happy to talk about it. I feel like it's the true premiere of the season. And we're definitely hitting the ground running with these queens. So I am excited to break it all down today. And uh, my hat twin, <laughs> Beth Dixon. Beth, how are you? The theme on the runway this week is beanie slash whatever toque or whatever you call these hats. It's just da, very da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> the theme of this week is cold. It's cold. Um, <laughs> but I'm doing well. Um, I love a ball episode when every single queen is there because then we get extra looks to look at. And boy, were we fed this week. So I'm excited about that for sure. Yes. So we had, what, 14 queens. Times three. Three looks. <laughs> 42 total looks on this oh okay aman has joined the hat club great good you can sit with yes! us <laughs> come on hat. My, 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 yeah, my now i have to get stash. a black hat now i'm the odd one now. oh it's yeah, gray it's, it's kind of gray. Oh, okay 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 so it's the mixture between <gasps> yeah. oh that's so cute that's the little baby hat perfect <laughs> great <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're going to talk about 42 freaking looks today. It's absolutely, it's it's wild. It's funny because, you know, they usually advertise and it's this many looks. I mean, I didn't necessarily see some of the promos. Maybe they were doing that, but I, this has to be a record. 42 looks in one episode. And we get one of them, of course, constructed. The other two, the queens were allowed to bring from home. And I feel like we just really need to start the episode before digging into all of the meat and potatoes of the maxi challenge. The groups are meeting. <laughs> Y'all mentioned mm -hmm. this. This does feel like the real premiere because mm -hmm. now we're having both of the groups come together. We're getting to see these queens interact with one another for both good or bad reasons. I think it was also very interesting, Amon, to hear some of the queens who know each other give us a little bit of insight into some of the queens' personalities. Yeah, I mean, the more and more that this show goes on, the more likely it is that drag families are going to, you know, have legacies on the show or people that just work together are going to be cast together on the show. So um, I think that that's probably highlighted a lot more this season, given the fact that there is a Raid of Queen system going on. So they wanted to have queens that have history to see how that's going to affect how people rate one another. Um, so it's, you know, it's kind of giving like, you know, like social strategy comes into drag race in a way that we haven't quite seen before because we know what all stars looks like but this is the first like you know main series flagship season that we're having to deal with these relationships and they're definitely they are the ships are shipping okay they are paying dividends so far mm -hmm. definitely and i also think too that like i was really excited to see is what is morphine and plain jane gonna be like because they're both like really I don't know, ready to read a queen kind of thing and come mm -hmm. to find out they know each other and they're actually like kind of related, the adopted sister essentially uh, into the family. So that was like, I didn't expect that. So this goes to show too that like in an age where, you know, we can be connected with people so like far across the country from ourselves, uh, we're seeing that manifest itself on Drag Race as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That interaction was especially interesting because then we get plain Jane saying, I am a morphine stan. I was like, I oh, okay. It. I was like, I didn't expect this. Another thing I didn't expect was Plasma going for Safira over the singing. That was a surprise to me. That was and not then a surprise to me. That is a that is a music nerd <laughs> trying to be protected. <laughs> if anybody has ever been to music school or theater school or anything like that, you know that I'll oh, you won the challenge and I didn't? Okay, well, that means that, you know, like there's there's a yeah. sense of security. So that did not shock me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about Dawn calling Megami the Eeyore of drag? <laughs> 
as soon as she said that, I was like, oh, I kind of see it. Yeah. <laughs> But why, know, like, is she, is she just, like, I don't know. I mean, I guess, like, her performance last week during the talent show was, like, a little bit of, like, a sobering reminder of, like, what's going on in the world. But I didn't mm -hmm. necessarily see it as, like, ER-ish so much as it was, like, just, like, it just sort of shifted the mood. But maybe, yeah. we're, maybe mm -hmm. she's, like, maybe she's just a little bit more, like, <sighs> on set and we're not seeing it yet. So maybe that's the storyline <laughs> that they're setting up. It was going to be really interesting. Maybe she's going to get like the 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 Trinity Cable Nay in season six edit. You know the what well, was that's, me queen. Well, that's that's kind like... of what I was. That's the kind of sense I've gotten, not just from, not actually from the show, but mo more so from her tweets and her social media. That comes off as oh, being okay. a little bit more. Um, I hate to say it this way, but like a little bit more like defensive of why she's had to do things, which you would do. You're an artist and you're on television, mm -hmm. but there is very much that kind of Trinity Cable Nay kind of. Not defeatist, but like this is what I do, and I can't like bring it to Let the competition. Let me ask you so. a very fair mm, question. Fair question: What do <laughs> you do, you do successfully? successfully? Quickly. Quickly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also want to share though that Megami tweeted my favorite tweet about this week, and it says the theater gay three stage Pokemon evolution: Plasmander <laughs> to Janmillion to Al Alexander. <laughs> Surprise to no one, get a little bit of a flavor of plain Jane's opinion on Amanda, a mandatory meetings drag, which then continues in Untucked, which is essentially, I think Amanda's drag is hideous, <laughs> which is the quote that I think sort of sums up her opinion <laughs> on Amanda, which, as I said, continues in Untucked. So we're definitely sort of setting the stage, I think, for a lot of interactions. I'm very curious to see what the payoff of some of these is going to be as we progress through this season. Mm hmm. The other thing, too, that I want to talk about is the Raid of Queen. So we got to see the Raid of Queen results, sort of, from last mm -hmm. week. So we know that the queens this week are going to get another chance to do the Raid of Queen, but we get to see the at least overall order of the results from last week. So for group one, it was Saphira and Q, which we knew they were in the top two. Then Dawn, Mirage, Morphine, Tsunami, and Amanda. The week two order was Plain Jane, Geneva, Nymphia, Plasma, Maya, Hershey, Megami. And it seemed like Morphine, Maya, and Megami all had sort of something to say. And I think that that's where the Mag Megami's response then was also kind of giving Eeyore in that moment of like, like, I don't understand. Like, why was I last? Like, kind of thing. Um, I know that it wasn't like maybe like a talent for a talent show, but I also felt like the message was more important. And that girl, I held the signs up, okay? <laughs> you can't like, the challenge by it was being, the most you know, <laughs> topical and bringing us back to a place where they, we get it, but that wasn't the assignment. OK, and you have right. plenty of time in your DRs, hopefully if you're an engaging enough character and just in the workroom in general to talk about that stuff. Please do talk about it. Shed light on it. But for the talent show, girl, for the talent show. I on. held up a piece of paper <laughs> when she said it was unique, too. Right. And it's like, OK, well, we've seen political statements before at the end of the episode. Vote. The queens all hold on the side. <laughs> in the outro so you know anyway was, uh, you know what great. though Thanks. that is a solid strategy hey rupaul i'm good at holding a sign don't get rid of me i could be holding that <laughs> register to vote sign at the yeah. end of every episode I'm so good at it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i really wanted them to be messy though and give all the results like who I did you? Too. i'm actually yeah. pissed that they didn't i was really hoping for everybody oh. to figure that out and then like how yeah. does that play into like the <laughs> dynamics of the rate of queen for this week Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah exactly uh they probably just didn't have enough time in the episode because how would you do it it would be like we have to go through individually like okay plain jane did this is this is this is this like geneva did this is this is this is this you know what they should have done not is not it. given a, a envelope that rupaul just throws that that was weird to me <laughs> that was um, so funny to me <laughs> it was funny but i was just like i love that the production value is here you go bitches <laughs> just toss but it would have been even better like, this is Again, I'm going back into like my theater kid thing. If they put basically like a cast list up on the workroom, up on the mirrors, oh, like instead yes. of the goodbye messages, and you have to go and look at everybody's ranking of the ordering, and they didn't even say anything about it. They just walk into the workroom and are like, "What's that?" and go over and see it. Mm. Uh, producers, hire me. Nice. I mean, it's nice. not stopping the girls from talking amongst themselves. Yeah, I'm sure as we sure. get to see that 
Nymphia seemingly sussed out why it was that she was not in the top two last week. Nymphia for um, traitors. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of the unseen stuff that we're probably getting, and I would be interested to see if she can, can confirm this at Roscoe's or wherever on the road, whatever. If she, you know, had been having conversations with all the other girls and asked them first, like, so would you rate me? Would you rate me? And was like, yeah, it was plain Jane. Plain Jane did something to my, mm-hmm. to my rating. So... <laughs> the math ain't math. To be fair, I don't think that plane really tried to hide it that well either. So she's like, no, I, I voted really fair. <laughs> <laughs> it was Agatha all along. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What else? Okay, there's one more logistic thing, feels like logistics that I want to talk about, which is this idea of the immunity potion. Mm-hmm. So the next day in the workroom, sort of after the queens come together, both Plain Jane and Safira get their immunity potions, which specifically say instructions not included. We find out from Rue later that they can either, well, they can either use it on themselves or another queen, which I thought was very interesting, but they have the ability to essentially use it at, at any point in time, although there is an expiration date, which we'll find out about later. I don't know, maybe at final, like final, whatever, you know, that's like the last time that you can use it. Final six was something like that would be my assumption. And mm-hmm. I, I mean, oh, the the other thing about it was that it seems to me, based on this episode, is that they have to decide whether or not they're going to use it before the tops and bottoms are announced, which I think is fair. It reminds mm-hmm. me of Survivor, the immunity idol, but essentially it's a similar concept. So I'm kind of yeah. okay with that. Nothing was used in this episode, but I'm sure we'll hopefully see it at some point moving forward. And I love the idea of using it as a bargaining chip to save another queen. Yeah. Although what ultimately does that really do for you? I don't know, especially if they're not if they're not going to add any more potions in or not. Right. So if there's the potential, like I could see them saying this potion's only good for three episodes. And then on the fourth episode, here you go. Here's another potion to add into the mix and that kind of thing. So if they do it periodically, I could see there being an opportunity. But I'm with you, Liana. And I'm I mean, strategically in a game like Survivor, there are situations where it makes absolute sense to use your idol on somebody else in the game. Mm-hmm. But this is not the same kind of thing, even with the vote, if they continue to do Raid a Queen, which I have a hard time believing they just stop after the first couple of weeks. I really mm-hmm. think that that's just going to be uh, a part of the the whole, uh, th- which I think is great. Um, I, I love that essentially what the show has done is said, hey, you guys have been complaining about the judging for a long time um, and saying that it's out of, out of uh, touch with what drag performers are really doing and saying, let's make the Queens the voice of who's in the top and the bottom. And then the judges will give their critiques based off who's in front of them. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. And then they ultimately Mm -hmm. decides who's the bottom two and the, and the, and the top winner. I love that. I think that makes complete sense. Um, So I can absolutely see the immunity continue to play as long as there's also a rate of queen. Cause I could also see them start being shady as it gets into the competition and go, by the way, now you were going to show you who voted how now that there's only, mm-hmm. you know, 10 queens left or whatever. So are they, are they rating a queen next week again? Because I remember I don't last week they were like, for the final time in the trailer for this episode, they were like, for the final time, you get to rate each other. But like, I feel like I didn't hear him say that this time around in, in the actual episode. So now I'm confused. Yeah. Or maybe I just missed it. The language, so it wasn't that, Amon, but it was similar. The language that Rue said was, you have one more chance to rate a queen, which will determine the top three and the bottom three from the rate a queen. And then the one of the queens said, oh, so we're voting before the critiques. So one more chance. I believe this is it, at least in its current circle form. Maybe we'll get some type of voting later on. I'm not sure. Again, with the whole immunity thing, maybe that will. I see RuPaul being the kind of person to be like one more chance, as in one additional chance. And then next week we have one more chance because it's one more additional. You know what I mean? Like that's so ticky tacky. You think I? But that that is exactly what RuPaul does. Yeah, 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 RuPaul's ticky tacky. So ticky tacky. (laughs) Tick tack lunch. Ticky tacky. It all makes sense. It's all all makes sense. That's my conspiracy theory. (laughs) Okay, great. Let's talk about the maxi challenge. So it is a ball and not just any ball. It is the mother of all balls where the Queens have to have three looks. So two brought from home, one constructed the first one, mother goose, an outfit inspired by nursery rhyme outfit. Number two, significant mother, an outfit inspired by a famous mother. And then the final look is call me mother slash father eleganza. So a 
an outfit made from scratch, specifically using menswear, which was provided for the queens to use. So we've, like I said, 42 looks to talk about. So I'm going to go ahead, pop up the looks, and we're going to go one by one talking about what each of the queens brought to the table. We're going to kick things off with Geneva Vroom Vroom <laughs> Carr, a queen who does... What are you laughing at? Uh, and mine goes, oh. <laughs> as you brought up Geneva's <laughs> <laughs> oh, I yeah, yeah. Well, we'll we'll talk about we'll talk about all the looks. Uh, so Geneva does end up in the bottom and ends up lip syncing for her life. So it seemed mm -hmm. to be both the critiques from the queens themselves and also from the judges that were not so happy about these looks. It sounds like that's something that Aman shares. <laughs> Aman, what are your opinions on Geneva's looks here? I mean, I don't feel like I disliked them as much as the judges did. But I did sort of agree with the critique that the first one did feel just very, very heavy. It looked like it was cumbersome um, and hard to like maneuver. And who was she was supposed to be again? Miss Muffet? She yeah. was, yes, Miss Muffet. And then she was Selma Hayek for the mother look. The, the significant mother, yeah. I yeah. did like the Selma Hayek look. I thought it was a pretty uh, good interpretation of the uh, side by side that we saw. The men's wear. I mean, I I enjoy the concept, um, and I think um, I do I do think that it comes across just a little bland. But I think when you had some of the other seamstresses that were in this competition, there was just no way that you weren't going to be able to like bring it. Like you had to br absolutely bring your A game for that last one um, in order for you to like even have a, a remotely good placement. I don't know if she's bottom two. I'm going to be interested going through these again just to see like how I felt about it. Because I remember when I was watching it for the first time, I was like, Geneva's in the bottom? Okay, I guess. I remember thinking, I didn't, I, I don't know. I felt like I remembered someone else being not as great as she was. So we'll see in a second, I guess. Mm -hmm. I felt like the first look, I, I hate that skirt so much. And if, if it had gone all the way around, I probably would have liked it. It's just, it's, it's not a slit at that point. This is just, it's, it doesn't look like if it looks like a sleeping bag that you haven't zipped up properly. <laughs> and like, yeah. that's the portion where I'm like, ah, oh, no, come on. And the hat being too much in her face, it just seemed like everything was just not proportional for her. Um, even though I like the concept, the second look, is not long enough. Oh my God. Please have the pant leg go farther down. Selma Hayek's did not end there. It went down and it just, <laughs> that is so distracting with that high of a heel, especially with the sheer uh, heel as well to have it end so high above the ankle was very distracting to me, but I felt the rest of it was actually a pretty solid. They were like, we didn't get Selma Hayek. I was like, it literally looks exactly the same. It's just not long enough. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know. Mm -hmm. I actually really like her constructed look. I think it's a unique take. I uh, I like the little peekaboo aspect of the skirt showing right in the front, but having kind of like that bathing suit thing. I do think Plain Jane made the mention of like, how do you feel knowing that you used more of the stretch fabric than like blah, 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 blah. And yeah. while I, I do love the colors, I love this color of like this kind of like, you know, uh, sky blue with, I don't know how you'd even describe that like gray brown kind of suit, but I love that as a concept. I love it with her hair and her makeup and everything. I just also agree that maybe there should have been more emphasis on the actual bodysuit itself of incorporating other parts of, um, the construction challenge rather than just the fabric itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had the same reaction to Amon when she was first announced in the bottom. I was like, okay, that's weird. I don't know why. And then looking at the looks, I'm like, okay, I can see it. I think I didn't have as much of an issue with the first one because it's so freaking cold. And the fact that it looks like a sleeping bag looked very appealing yeah. to me. I would love to be wrapped <laughs> up in that hat and the skirt and <laughs> just, you know, cozy on up in that. Um, and then, I mean, the last look, when, when playing Jane said that in the workroom, there was a little, you know, bell that went off. It was like, oh, this is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> the mm -hmm. fact that she, you know, did use the fabric from from the wall. So I think ultimately I understand why she ended up in the bottom, although it was not my my initial gut reaction. 
Yeah. I uh, I gave them all ratings as I went through, and she mm-hmm. had the lowest average for me, so it okay. made sense for me when I watched it. But I also yeah. did have a moment of like, was she that bad though? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But also, it's forty two looks, so you're just like, well, I I saw a blur. Oh, right. so, and yeah. she was first, so <laughs> yeah. it makes it harder. Like each yes. look, you're like, I saw thirteen queens after her. So mm-hmm. yeah, I couldn't really, I couldn't even remember honestly at mm-hmm. first when yeah. she was announced. But here we are. All right, our next queen is Dawn. So Dawn's looks, her mother goose was cushy cow, which I'm going to say. Yes. Apparently, Some of these nursery I have... rhymes, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> That's what I, that was my reaction too. I was like, I think I knew about three of the nursery rhymes in total. So I don't know if that says more about I feel me. like they were making up things. <laughs> What kind of did they have the German Grimm brothers? Like, what is happening? I this was all very different. I thought she was how Bonnie let down by milk. (laughs) (laughs) Did they give them a list? Like, did they give them a list? Because how did they not repeat? Like, that's the thing I was genuinely more shocked about. I was expecting repeats because when I think of nursery rhymes, there's like four that I think of. I'm sure they had to submit who they were going to do. And then the producers made sure there were no doubles because they've done that in the past where some queens have been told somebody else is already going to be doing this. Look, you have to find something else. Or somebody else is already going to do this song for their talent show lip sync. So you have to find something else. Mm -hmm. Um, So maybe Maybe, especially given how early this ball has come, they probably said, you know, uh, they probably had more control um, than mm-hmm. if it was a later ball. Mm-hmm. This, this and I'm not going to. Yeah. This nursery rhyme is basically just telling the cow to either give me milk or die. So maybe that's why we're all growing up. What I. Maybe it is some Grim Brothers <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Damn. Oh God! Yeah, I just read it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, our most nursery rhymes like a little bit messed up, but that yeah. one, yeah, that one kind of gets straight to the point. Uh, <laughs> so, so her her mother look, significant mother look, was Audrey Hepburn, which I I absolutely adored. I think mm-hmm. that was probably my favorite. Although mm-hmm. it was interesting because when she drew her concept for Rue, especially with the suspenders going all the way down to the boots, I was like, oh, I love that. But then the execution, maybe it's because of the the actual bodice piece it didn't the suspenders i wanted to be like the focus like i wanted that to stand out and i completely forgot and almost didn't even notice that she had them on when she did her final runway look so i mean i know that dawn is a seamstress and it was kind of like oh dawn vq like who's gonna win but i since she wasn't even in the top <laughs> yeah but i i kind of understand why I do too. I actually, this last look of hers that she constructed, I'm not going to pretend like it's not impressive that she was able to do that. Of course, Mm -hmm. there's a lot of technical abilities Mm -hmm. here, but I completely agree with everything you said, um, Liana. And on top of that, it's kind of a mixture of what Shea Coulee constructed in season (laughs) nine and Selena Stitty's last season where she was in the bottom for that look. So I felt like This was her trying, like, where Shay, like, won that challenge and Selena was in the bottom two for that challenge or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like this was safe in the middle almost. Um, But I don't know. I mean, her wearing those heelless heels, I think, really gave her a lot of, you know, cool points with the first look. Mm -hmm. The Audrey Hepburn, her face was stunning. And then I do think that the last one obviously was technically difficult to create. But I think that in terms of the other, when you compare it to the other ones that were technically difficult to create, those ones had like more of a clear cut image of like you could see what it was. Whereas with this one, it's a little bit, it's just a touch busy in the the. Mm -hmm. the parachute jacket type deal kind of like Mm -hmm. swallows her up a little bit. So yes, beautiful construction. But when it comes to like looking at it at first glance, it doesn't pop in the same way that the other ones would. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Our next queen that we're going to talk about is Hershey liquor store. Jate. Unfortunately, Hershey ends up in the bottom and does end up going home. And I don't know about you, Beth, but the headline for me is really that last look. Um, I feel like the headline is getting progressively worse. Like, because oh. she comes out in this B look and I was all, I was here for it. I love the mixture of a latex and a fur moment. That is incredible to me. Um, I 
love the silhouette. I love how she looks and I love the short little, um, you know, bus driver wig. Love all of that. Um, I didn't feel like it was mother nature for the second one, like, which is what she was going for. That was like globe on fire, but the fire is leaves and the leaves are a weird yellow green color. Like I just, Mm -hmm. the, the dress itself is cool, but it just, for me, it was like, I was supposed to be doing something else. So I'm going to use this for mother nature. I, I, I just felt like it could have been a little bit more to what she was trying to do. Um, Not that it doesn't look cool, but, and then the last one, as soon as I learned that she didn't make the pants, it was done for me. (laughs) I was like, if when, when they came out and she was put in the bottom, I was like, she made pants. What? And then they were like, but you didn't make those pants, right? She's like, no. And I'm like, okay, nope. She can go home. Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise, and I hated, I hate the orange shoe with the mint green. But other than that, I was like, this was absolutely safe worthy. That top is, is beautiful, um, like constructed and everything. But no, you lost me when you didn't make the pants, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I have the same neck pants. Yeah, I don't want to sound like, you know, because I, once again, I am not a drag queen. I am not a seamstress. I'm not going to sit here and pretend as if I, you know, have the skills or whatever to create looks and all that and curate and all that. But when stuff like this happens on the show, I tend to wonder, are we starting to get down towards the bottom of the barrel in terms of some of these queens that the, that the producers are looking for? Like, has the show been around too long and there simply aren't just enough drag queens that have all of the things that you want for drag race? Because it make like, how did this happen? Like it's a design challenge and yes, she can't sew, but how did it get to the point where she's literally wearing pants that she brought instead of constructing something? You know what I mean? I'm like, I mean, maybe I missed it in the episode. I was at a bar. It was kind of loud. I kind of missed a couple things here and there, but I feel like we didn't get enough of her, like, difficulty in the edit. You know what I mean? Like, where was the struggle? Where was the decision? I'm just going to wear pants instead of I'm going to create this look. I don't know. Because all we got was the first part where it was like, I'm going to make these socks into a, a, like, a pleated skirt. And I loved the concept. The execution, of course, was a little iffy. I feel like you should have went with, I would have rather have just seen that and to be a busted skirt than you wearing pants that you didn't even make. Because then you're not even, it's like, for sure, it's a foregone conclusion at that point. You're going to go home because you didn't do the challenge. Like mm-hmm. everyone else did the challenge. And I was just like, oh God, this is this is really bad. And it's no shade to her. Once again, I'm not a seamstress. Okay. So please don't misunderstand my critique yeah. as in like I could do something better. I know I can't, but it just feels like how I don't know. I just like how does stuff like this happen? Because there are other people on this cast that don't sew, but still came up with something. It was mm-hmm. just, I don't know. I just felt really, really sad for her i think it's really tough too because obviously in the wor- the workroom with the walkthrough we see her come up with this initial idea and she's talking about this skirt and then sees Rue's reaction is like oh that's not gonna work so there could be a uh, an, uh, an idea of like getting in your own head and sort of overthinking and then trying to she even talks about like she did it in her hotel room at night trying to create something else so this also just could be an example of sort of the pressure of the competition and Mm -hmm. feeling like oh my gosh i don't know what i'm doing because i thought that hershey had a really strong showing in the first episode yeah and so to see her kind of drop the ball here, I think was, was unfortunate at the same time, someone's got to go home first. And so unfortunately, if we do have to lose a queen here, like that's just the nature of the beast. And even if in given other circumstances, maybe she can create something different. Like it just, it didn't fit for the first challenge and maybe this first challenge looks different and she makes it, you know, it uh, passed in a couple weeks. So mm-hmm. that's just sort of the nature of the beast for, for this episode. That's, yeah. That's very but, true. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I'm the first one to lose somebody in my trap. <laughs> oh, oh, no. We should have Randy send that to us so we can include it at the end of podcast. So just be like, and just here we go. Here's another summary. <laughs> the Mother Nature <laughs> outfit, like, I loved where she was going. Um, 
but it just didn't go far enough. It was basically just, mm-hmm. you know, you know, a, a skin tight dress with some things glued on top of it. But I did like the concept. I did like that it was more of like a she went for like a planet theme as opposed to like, you know, trees and vines and, you know, that kind of thing. So was she am I just noticing was she, or is this just the angle that I'm seeing here, like the reflection? Was she did she have a fake pregnant belly on? Obviously, she oh, doesn't she? have a real one. Because if she did, that elevates it so much. But I don't think that she did. I don't think Ooh. so. I think it's just the angle. With the Somebody called in Luxnor, London. Let me just say, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great, great call back there. Um, <laughs> if she had done a pregnant belly to be like Mother Nature, but like the globe, I could have gotten so much more on board with that. Mm. Um, but or was she I mean, Mother I Earth? Don't... The thing that. is, is like, I don't even mind the latex bodysuit with the, the continents on it. I think that looks cool. For me, it's all the other stuff. I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't know what this jacket is telling me. What are those leaves? Rip them off. Because otherwise, the bodysuit itself is is cute. It's not right. amazing. But I love the detail on it. And I think the continents are done really well. So I think that's pretty. But yes, there are just all of those sort of little details that unfortunately at this level have to be executed in order to, to stand out. Yeah. All right, let's discuss Mirage. Mm. So, Amon, walk us through your thoughts on Mirage. Baba Black Sheep. Okay, I'm seeing mm-hmm. it's kind of giving like, you know, like, you know, it's giving like Rodeo Drive, really wealthy white woman, you know, just went shopping. I'm here for it. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Um, and then what was her second one? That was it supposed was to be La Llorona. Llorona? Llorona. Yes. Uh, it is a vengeful on ghost. A vengeful ghost in Latin American folklore who is said to roam near bodies of water, mourning her children, whom she drowned in a jealous rage after discovering her husband was cheating on her. Yeah, I remember doing a little bit of research on her after because I'd never heard of her until um, I was exposed to this, to the show. And I think it's in, I mean, from what I can tell, I think it's a, pretty interesting interpretation where it's not like too literal and it's giving it a little bit more of a drag sex appeal and it's very much mirage um i don't know if it pops as much as some of the other outfits in that category but it was definitely you know something that we haven't seen before so i appreciated it for that um and then the, the third constructed look i mean it's okay it's okay um i think she really i mean I think what they said in untucked i think really applies here they were like girl you were kind of nervous about your look. You weren't really sure if it was going to serve. But the way that you sold it on the runway really gave. And, yeah. So, I think um, Mirage definitely has one of the best runway walks on the show. And the way that she just carries herself and moves her body is just so graceful and just so sexy. And just it has so much appeal to it. So, I think that's going to – that's what really elevates a lot of these looks. But – I think that she was kind of like really middle of the road. I think the first one is probably her strongest effort. And then the rest are kind of like, they're okay. All right. I felt like her first two looks were really solid. I felt like her last look, she's lucky that the first two were so solid. Um, It's not that it's horrible by any means, but it's also not good. (laughs) I hate Mm -hmm. to say it like that. Her constructed look that is. Um, I didn't really remember these until I, until, uh, uh, Liana popped them back up, but some right, of the other right. ones I still have them like stuck in my brain. Well, I, you know, I like I said, as I was watching, I gave everybody out of five, you know, like a, a rating of what I felt like, and I felt like her mm-hmm. first two were stronger. Um, I love the black sheep look. I I love that it's all those things that Amon that you said, but it's also giving in her face a little Amy Winehouse too, <laughs> Ooh, <I can laughs> which is it. really interesting to me, and I love that. Um, so I just I you know somebody who you know, participates at, at the the elite of capitalism, but also like wants to pretend like they're so against the system. I don't know. But I love that as like the black sheep, right? Um, mm-hmm. The black sheep of the rich people. Like, I just, I love that kind of concept. I think it's so interesting. And then the La Llorona is something that I thought was really well, well done. I love this bodysuit. I love um, that the way that she painted on or had like those tears that come out of the eye, like all of that was really cool to me. Um, And 
all of this, I still got a good sense of Mirage. And I don't know if it's because of the heels, because baby, she will come out in a stripper heel like you wouldn't believe. Um, but she, me, I don't think she owns any other shoes. I think no it's way. All it's heels. only pleasers. Yeah, it's <laughs> only pleasers for sure. Um, for me, she would have been, if there was a bottom four, she would have been the fourth. Um, uh, so very towards the bottom of the safe people, um, purely because I just didn't, cause I also think like her last look is basically the same silhouette as her first look. And we've also kind of already seen that from her. Yeah. I think I am a hundred percent bias on her <laughs> because I have watched her talent show like performance now many times. <laughs> I have also watched several other TikTok performers perform her <laughs> performance <laughs> i'm like very obsessed with it so yeah, i she's definitely I, my crush of the season yeah i love her same so i was very i was very high on the first two looks but i can recognize the bias if that makes sense yeah. like i totally understand the critiques but i was just like wow i love you and then the last <laughs> look i do think she was she was able to pivot well right from kind of the ugly weird thing that she had made before but it's mm -hmm. so the apocalyptic thing i thought it was smart to do the bruise mm -hmm. so that was like kind of cool but yeah it doesn't uh, it doesn't quite connect and as you said it's sort of similar to things that we've seen at least in terms of the like crop top silhouette look mm -hmm. all right Let's move on to Megami. So Megami, what, her, what was? We yes, saw. she's <laughs> little Bo Peep. Uh, yes, little Bo Peep, and then she did Lady Gaga for her significant mother look. Beth, what about her looks? What did you like? Not like? Okay, so she's somebody where like I. I love and dislike the looks at the same time, so, and I and I have a hard time being like. How do I really feel about this? And the first look, I love the deconstructed aspect of it. I don't think it's 100% effective, but I still want to give her the points because that is not what I would expect. And I love that it's very draggy. I love that every aspect of it is a little off and deconstructed in some way, you know, like it's, it's a see-through instead of white. Like you see the petticoat rings, you see, you know, the fishnets and, and like everything. Right. I, and like the makeup is just faded enough that she's like a doll that you played with when you were younger, but like is still sitting on your shelf and it's just a little creepy. Cause like, you know, got worn down a little bit in childhood. I loved mm -hmm. all of that. Um, I thought the lady Gaga look was, pretty solid like it looked pretty similar i love that it's you know put on a bigger body and i love that we're able to celebrate that like hmm, not everything has to only be on a thin person for example um i that said it kind of comes across like a clear trash bag at times when she was moving rather than like a skirt and that was like a little distracting to me um I love her last look, look though. I like this was incredibly well constructed. I you can tell she's using those cosplay skills um to put together what I thought was like a really really good solid look. She had one of my favorite last looks actually. Um and I I loved the attention to detail, this kind of construction uh look and and like putting a little Puerto Rican uh, flair on that as well. Like I just saw everything about that from head to toe looked really clean and it, there was a lot, but there wasn't so much that I was distracted, if that makes sense. So I, um, I'm kind of looking it up right now. So because I, the, the Lady Gaga look, y'all know I'm always going to, when it comes to Gaga. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I liked it. I liked that she went for that. I, don't I kind of agree with you though, Beth? I felt like the material was the issue mm -hmm. because if she was going for the look that she is giving in the telephone music video, it's not so see through, it's kind of like a paper mache type, like heavy, heavy plastic latex type look. It looks very like she's like coming out of like a machine and she just been plastered with some type of like material. That's what it kind of looks like in the video with this. It uh, it didn't sort of like it didn't go far enough, I would say, mm -hmm. and it looked it looked a little bit too costumey, which is what she does. 
But I think this didn't go far enough towards the drag realm that I was like, okay, I'm here for it. The hair, I think is great. The one, the thing that make creating the, the telephone out of the hair, great. I love that. And I really enjoyed her last book too. I thought that that was, was very like Bob the Builder. <laughs> but yeah. like, I feel like I, I feel like I could watch, I could see like Bob the Drag Queen or something like this. <laughs> Um, Roberta really like, the the builder. Yeah, <laughs> but I really enjoyed. Um, I think the first one is probably her strongest. I feel like this is what Bo Peep in Toy Story wishes that she could wear. Like, <laughs> yeah, I feel like that matches the Bo Peep's personality of Toy Story to a T because she's a little, you know, she's a little, she's a little, you know, va va boom in the movie. Mm. Catch my breath. So that's immediately what I thought of, and I thought that that was probably the best outfit that she brought forward. <laughs> Oh, you are muted, Liana. <laughs> oh, no. How will you know what I think? I'll just repeat it. The proportions, I think, on the first look are just so good. Mm -hmm. Like, I love the way that that dress makes her the shape of her body. It just, it's stunning. I think my struggle with the last look is because of the way she's in the color blocking, it really disrupts that vertical line. And because she has the, the mermaid at the bottom is also a different color that it's like chunk, chunk, chunk. And I kind of wish that you got to, like, I would have rather her picked two of those to be the same color to then continue to elongate and like, mm. just really for me, make it. But I love the idea of the Roberta, <laughs> the, uh, the, the builder. So I think that's very cute. I think it's definitely safe. And I think she ended up in, in the right place ultimately. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mandatory meeting. So a mandatory meeting, uh, well, so she sort of has four looks because her mother look was Michelle Visage. So she sort of has the transformation of Michelle, which I thought was very cute. And then her mother goose look was little pussy, which I was also not familiar with. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love little pussy. Her coat is so warm. And if I don't hurt her, she'll do me no harm. I won't pull her tail nor drive her away. But pussy and I together will play. That okay. is a hundred percent been on somebody's Tinder profile. You know it. <laughs> you know it. And you know that nobody knew that nursery rhyme because mm -hmm. I certainly didn't. Mm. Um, yeah, I did not, and uh, that's what. We, so that was for the first look. I was like, I don't. Is it? Do I just not get it? And then that's why I don't get it. There's something so weird about the way she looks with the short little dress. It makes her look like a. I don't know, like an I, like I, a bell thing. I just, I. It's so weird to me. I kind of love it though. I love sure, it. Sure, like what, like what the story is, right? Like. Is she, is that dress supposed to be like a baby doll dress? Is she supposed mm -hmm. to be a baby, but she's a hooker stripper baby that likes playing with pussies? Like, cause then I'm like, kind of like, that's kind of weird. Or is it baby <laughs> hooker? You know what I mean? Like she's a young, oh. a fledgling hooker. That okay, loves I Googled playing. little pussy. Don't do that. Little pussy. <laughs> <nursery> <laughs> Or have safe search on. Oh, God. Uh, uh -huh. So I like it because of the proportions. Like, it's it's playing with this is so unrealistic. Also, those cats are giant. <laughs> those are big <laughs> ass pussies. Those are, that is not it's little not pussy. Little that is big pussy those are big pussies right big there pussy oh. energy bpe everybody um yeah this had a lot of big pussy energy here but she also i i love the proportions because it's also remember like when naomi smalls first comes into the work room a work room in the first uh in season eight and you're just like wow those legs go on for days but she has also a normal size abdomen <laughs> <laughs> there's like no abdomen here <laughs> so yeah. it's just like really funny i i love it because it's so kooky and draggy and all that kind of stuff that said i do hate the pussies sorry um and i <laughs> i think that her makeup reminded me a lot of magnolia crawford here. <laughs> okay here's the thing about the makeup i feel like we just need to make a blanket statement of like she's gonna improve after the show yes okay like she looks she's not great 
you can't improve your makeup that much, especially when this is your starting place. Sure, in sure, like sure. A, a couple of days. So I just I'm, thought it was funny because I was like, Magnolia Crawford. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because it's, you know, obviously blend, blend, blend. Her eyebrows are still very short and tiny and weird. So I'm just it's I'm yes, just hoping for the best it. for her. Look, I what I do like about a mandatory meeting, however, is that like, yes, we can talk about like editing on the show. I would much rather, and I mean like editing like one's look, curating your own look, not necessarily the edit of the show. And I much rather prefer when judges give that critique as opposed to you're mm -hmm. not giving enough. Cause I think yeah. mm -hmm. the one thing that she's going to get, like she's going to be, she's going to put each and every like ounce of her ideas into her looks. And I love that. Maybe mm -hmm. it doesn't always translate that well. Maybe it needs a little, you know, editing and some, some, some fixing up, but at least I don't think we're ever going to be bored with whatever she has on the run. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I felt like um, her Michelle Visage look was really interesting to have the metamorphosis that we have seen, which is that mm -hmm. I think Michelle Visage is the most beautiful she's ever been right now. And like she can, I was going to say she's aging gracefully, but that, you know, that that plastic surgery and Botox is aging her gracefully as well. <laughs> um, but I love like, like just the evolution of aesthetic. That said, I don't think she, she's never been one on the show when she was wearing like the boss necklace and that kind of thing she wasn't wearing bright colors like that she was really more like that would be a hint but it was more black and like that kind of thing so i just kind of wish that rather than making the dress be multicolored, that it maybe was a little bit more tailored to the kind of look that she would have had beforehand but then yeah. having that fun reveal and everything um it's i i felt like it was fun i don't think it's necessarily the best uh look all together for that category but i thought you know it helps when your uh leopard print heels work for both looks you know right um and then i thought that she did a great job of the construction i love the little um you know the the skirt pleating on the bottom and like kind of like the tube top and just the elements of the handkerchiefs and such um i thought that that was really cute uh again i don't think it was something mind-blowing nor was it something worthy of being in the bottom two so i think she was right where she had to be which was safe yeah mm. I dislike the last look mm. very much, very much. Uh, but the Michelle Visage to me and the first look was f fun and weird enough to sort of mm -hmm. keep me agreeing that she should she should be in the middle. I think, yeah, the, the, especially for me, the Michelle, the hair, pulling off the hair and revealing the gray, that was very yeah. cute. I loved that. So she got points in my book uh, for, for that. And I love that she was unabashed about kissing her ass. Like she was like, I'm kissing mm. Michelle's ass. Yes. Like I ain't kissing. And no the best part girl. is, is they hear that too. Like they hear the the voiceover on one of the things. So you better believe that Michelle was like, she knows she's kissing. <laughs> <her."> yeah. <laughs> All right. Our next queen, Morphine, is up next. She does Chris Jenner for her mother look, and then it was a man and a maid for her mother goose look which another one uh, mm -hmm. that i was not familiar with so i wasn't really sure what to expect there but i think overall especially the first two looks i thought they were very clean very well put together her makeup looks absolutely stunning i don't really get the last look slash not a huge fan of the last look slash i j it looks like a butt on her chest and it looks weird to me i'm just thank you <laughs> not really crazy about that I and it's also hat. square it's yes, it's just, very square. Yeah, it's very square. The hat is, I think, the best thing that she made. Uh, and it and makes no made sense with the outfit, but I'll take yep. it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, fine. I mean, uh, safe for me, definitely, especially going on the strength of the first two looks. But the last one just uh, just wasn't necessarily doing it for me. Yeah, was it was just the jean version of a witch's costume, essentially. Um, yeah, like a bloody halloween witch's costume mm -hmm. but one that you would get from like spirit halloween not like one that's yes. like really nice oh yeah yes. no no you would yeah. not find yeah, this yeah, in yeah, 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 yeah. No. this is one of the ones that they were like two sizes fits all <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Okay. uh yeah yeah i don't necessarily the, the chris jenner one is it's uh it's it, it's a phone in for me Thanks. um i agree and the man and the maid, I mean, it's fine. I mean, I, I mean, look, the, the nursery rhyme one is kind of hard, I think, because so many of us haven't listened to these nursery rhymes growing up. So we don't 
have like a clear reference. It just feels like they just chose a word that was in the title of the of the nursery rhyme and went with it. Some of them, right? So it's like, whereas with others, you can see the story of the rhyme in the look. So it's kind of hard to really d- judge these looks for the nursery rhymes because some of them kind of like went for it. Some of them didn't. Um, and I'm going to consider that doesn't really look like she did anything aside from dressing up as a maid. So, yeah, I I mean, if she was going to be in the bottom, I would not have been surprised either. I feel like her and uh, Geneva could have swapped places and I wouldn't have batted an eye, to be honest. I had her in my bottom three for a long time, but I, I had a heart just because I felt like the second one, her Kris Jenner look is... I like the top, but I, again, I think it's just like really simple, but we do look at it and immediately know who she is. So I want to give her the props there. Um, I think we've all said how I feel about the last one, like where I'm all in agreement. The first one is the one that I've taken some time with because I love it. And I love one of the aspects of the costume, which is the fact that she has latex stockings on as well. But the latex stockings were bunching when she walked. And that was like, Mm -hmm. so it didn't look like a clean, straight kind of a, I don't know. It just, there were times where, and this is what's so difficult about like faux leather and, um, and latex and all these different materials is that when they bunch or whatever, it's like when you're walking, they, they make your proportions look different or they don't look as clean. And she looked like she had a whole bunch of bunching all over the place. So it looked like it didn't fit her, even though we know when it comes to things like this, it literally has to fit you like a glove. Um, So I know it fits her. It's just like, it's so much that the bunching was distracting for me. So she was somebody I originally had in the bottom, but I, couldn't in good faith sit there and be like she's has to be in the bottom three so she's like for me about four or five as well from from the bottom but i do think that safe was a fair place for her hmm. yeah hmm. next up we have oh, <laughs> not Amon's immediate reaction to uh to maya <laughs> here why don't you kick things off give us your feelings on her three looks um uh, i mean the first look um I, I think the bustier is just too big. It's just, it just covers her up so much. Like, I feel like she could have done with a little bit less of those feathers because it just, I just kept getting, detra- I couldn't even look at the rest of the outfit because I was just so distracted about how I couldn't really see the bottom of her face half the time. Um, maybe that's what she was going for, but I don't know. It just didn't really ring well with me. I think that it's a beautiful dress otherwise. Um yeah, I agree with them. I was definitely getting a little bit of Missy Elliott from the from the choreography, at least, that she was giving with her second look. Um, mm-hmm. But she did do that weird thing that Missy Elliott or um, that uh, Lil' Kim did at one of her concerts, like maybe like four or five years ago. She does like this weird like Matrix move. So when she did that, I did laugh. So that was <laughs> Um And then I sort of liked the grunge type of you know, a a Dora Delano esque type look that she had going on at the uh, at the end there. I think the judges really didn't like the color scheme, but that was kind of the point of the look for me. And I loved the 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 the, the nose ring made out of a, a oversized uh, safety pin. I thought that was great. So I don't think I think the judges were a little bit too hard on the last look. I think that it's constructed well. It, it fits her nicely. It, it it works. It's like something that I wouldn't have expected her to do. Like I wouldn't have expected her to be into like '90s grunge type fashion. And I think that she pulled it off well. So um, yeah, I mean, I, it, it was kind of like ups and downs with her. It was like kind of like peaks and valleys to her right now. Um, but I, you know, an overall serviceable effort for all three. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, Beth, what about you? Where do you fall on her looks? I think that the show was a little harsh on her for this week. That said, I'm in agreement. I She could have taken the last what appears to be like row of feathers at the very top. And if she had removed those, there still would have been plenty of feathers that were lower um, that would have shown off her neck and shoulders and the lower part of her face. But without that, it's like... Uh, instead of canary what i'm getting actually just with the way that the this is is like as if she's in like a wheat field 
I'm like that's what she like I'm trying to make my way through here you know like the <laughs> that's just like what I was getting so I wasn't even getting canary as much as I know that it's a canary yellow and everything I was getting agriculture um so <laughs> she <laughs> but I but I thought it was gorgeous I it just I want to see her beautiful face as well mm. I I do agree that the the movements were Missy Elliott but I saw her come out and I knew it was Lil' Kim. So I think that they're being a little harsh when they're like, I don't see Lil' Kim here. I'm like, well, it's basically the same outfit. Actually, hers looks a little better than Lil' Kim's did. I'm not going to lie. Um, mm -hmm. Because that's kind of the point of Lil' Kim <laughs> sometimes is that, you know, she's she's not willing or she's willing to be like, I'm actually the product. Whatever I'm wearing doesn't really matter. Um, I love her last look. I think that she's one of the few people who came out and I felt like her last look was better than what she brought in the other categories. I agree. Like you're talking about mismatching flannel. That is like the ultimate grunge thing you can do. I agree about the, her aesthetic and such. I think what the really got her, um, was how, <laughs> Uh, she said that she's disagreeing with RuPaul about her personality. She's like, no, I'm really, I'm really loud. And we can now say that for weeks, including the preseason coverage, I don't, I think she's loud when she's performing in terms of her presence, but she's not loud and energetic when she's talking or, you know, what, like there's like a reservedness there that I don't think that she's as aware of. Yeah, for I, I, me, I, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I was gonna say for me on that note when Rue was like, "Oh, so you're a loud personality," and like the most timid way she goes, like, "Yeah" or yeah. "No" or whatever it was. Oh, you have a timid personality, and replies so timidly, "No." <laughs> It was like, so oh, funny. No. And then they they kept in the awkward silence too. I was like, oh yeah. girl, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and she, you know, it could be one of those things because sometimes you know, we're all human. Sometimes like the way that we see ourselves doesn't always line up. Or sometimes, you know, we are that way when we're not like in a competition for two hundred thousand yeah. dollars and we have RuPaul and Michelle Visage and Carson Kressley and this other fashion. And you've never made a TV now. show before and all of a sudden you right. have to know everything that ha goes mm -hmm. into making a television show. And yeah. then you see all these other people that have these big ass personalities and then you start to get self-conscious because you're like, I don't want to appear like I'm trying to buy for her attention because I, you know, so, so it could be a lot of stuff going on in her mind right now. Or she might not just be as loud as she thinks that she is. Who knows? Oh, I guess, that's fine. I guess we'll, we'll see. But the only thing that my takeaway from that entire exchange was kiss to death, kiss to death, kiss to death, kiss to death, kiss mm -hmm. to death. Yeah. I was like, all I, right, well, how many episodes we got before we're going to be getting this critique over? Amon, I thought for sure at the end of that, I was going to be the one who was missing my first <laughs> person after. I was like, there's no way they keep this in here just for her to be safe. And then she was. And I was like, okay, so this, she's going to have the Trinity K. Bonet, you're too quiet. And she's going to be like, no, I'm not energy. Yeah. Um, so that's where I thought. Um, that I was going to get from her from the season. So hopefully she turns I, it around. I'm truly shocked. They didn't put her in the bottom. Like Same I thought too. that they were going to put her in the bottom and be like, you're a performer. We want to see you perform, perform. <laughs> so when they didn't do that, I was like, Oh wow. Okay. That was, I, it was truly shocking to me. And I think that, I mean, I'm happy that they did because I do think that she had the strongest of the Queens that were in the bottom. I think she had the strongest three looks. So mm -hmm. ultimately I'm happy with the, that decision. Although from a production and just an editing standpoint, it was a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Our next queen, we're now starting to get into some of the Queens who ended up in the top. And the first is Q. So Q has Judy Garland for her mother look. And then it's the man in the moon for her mother goose look. And I, I I think that, well, actually, first of all, in terms of the judges, so the guest judge this week was a designer, Isaac, uh, Mar uh, M I Z R A H I. I'm not hundred percent sure how to pronounce that. I don't remember that. Sorry, but it was so I'm lovely sorry. to have an actual designer <laughs> as a judge for the ball challenge. And I think he rightly yeah, gives her due. Yeah, I know. Right. Wow. Shocking planning. And I think he gives her a lot of credit for what she's able to create. And I think especially for me, the first two looks were very strong. And then the last one was obviously very good, uh, but 
a bit overshadowed by Nymphia when, when we talk about her next. But yeah. Amon, what were your feelings on Q here? Um, I really enjoyed the man in the on the moon um outfit. I like the top portion. I'm not entirely sure about the shoes that she chose. It felt a little like uh, it kind of like left me wanting. There's like so much adornment and like you know, it's just so bejeweled and everything at the top, and then it kind of like dies out towards the bottom. So I feel like if she would have stuck the landing, it would have been like a 10 out of 10 for me, but I enjoyed um it as a whole. The Judy Garland dress is just gorgeous and i believe she made all of these correct mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. once again like girl the talent is overflowing um and then the last one you're just looking at all the detail the, the attention to detail and like you could see i think carson you could like they showed him like squinting to try to see everything on the outfit maybe that was um nymphia i'm not sure but still like i think that there was like such she clearly is really really gifted in this craft and knows how to put together something and make it interesting and like just make your eyes feast on everything so i thought it was just um yeah it's really really solid but yeah i think that there was kind of no way that she was going to be able to beat the queen that we're going to get to eventually <laughs> yeah yep yeah no definitely anything you want to add but once you're done sneezing <laughs> anything yeah. you want to add about q <laughs> oh sorry yes um i i mean i think she deserved the win or um this week and i love her outfits um but i also understand nymphia winning um for sure mm -hmm. i thought that all three of the outfits were at least w number one or number two of, of of each of the categories i love this first outfit so so much with the man in the moon and like the little headpiece the thing that throws me off a little bit with q and especially this like the way she paints was her, which is gorgeous, but I think it's intentional here that it's like just a little unnerving with that man in the moon face. Like her, <laughs> like it looks a little like um, one of those creepy like porcelain dolls that you would have that was you know something like that. And I think that that's intentional, and I and I and I really both enjoy and fear that. Um, I love the material that she has um, for for that outfit. I just from head to toe, I thought that, that was great. The um, Judy Garland coming out and it looks exactly the same as the poppy dress, um, just like a little bigger poppies. What a great way to still be doing something bigger and bolder and draggy, but also being true to the original. Um, I thought she did a beautiful job there. And then this last look, I love how sculpted it is. I love the various different clashing black and white patterns that still go together. Like it doesn't look like it's clashing. Um, that takes a lot of talent and you can tell this just even with the different kinds of seams that she used, which I think that's the detail they were getting into and trying to look at is like, whoo, this wasn't just, you know, a simple seam that she did. Like she really went in there and, and knew how to do things in an effective way. Um, mm -hmm. And, and that Angeline wig really killed me as well. Uh, so I just, I thought that she very well could have deserved to win this, uh, this, this episode as well. Mm -hmm. The next queen we're going to talk about is our winner, Nymphia Wind, who does Little Boy Blue and then Angelina Jolie. And I mean, for me, it was the last look, the mm -hmm. way that she was able to take the ties and also to see the evolution from the walkthrough of what she was going to completely try to like take apart the ties and make an outfit. But there's still the centerpiece with the way that she has created walking art like this mm -hmm. to me was the most uh, it was it was absolutely my favorite look for the last one. And then the first look, also absolutely stunning. The second look, I see the critique of of not looking exactly like Angelina Jolie, but it, she put her twist on it, right? Mm -hmm. And when she talked about her drag children from Taiwan and putting their artwork on the back, like all of that just really connected with me. So for me, Amon, this was, this was the winner of the week. Yeah, I mean, the way that the bar erupted, erupted when she came around the corner it was it was insane like i couldn't believe it and i think like the way that they edited the episode where they made they showed her goofing off and speaking spanish with the queens and they didn't even really show i don't even think they really even showed apart from what she was trying with the ties at the beginning they didn't really show much of the outfit in the workroom so to go from that 
to this. It's like, how did you construct mm. all of this? How did you get the ties to move in that way and stay in that way? How is the how is the skirt flaring up like that? Like, it's just this is like she needs to be creating outfits for like the Met Gala. Like, it's crazy. It's it's insane. And like with a personality to match, it just once again, I'm having a hard time seeing how Nymphia doesn't win the season right now. Mm-hmm. Because, like, it's just been just a smash every episode for her. Um, little Boy Blue is great. I love the androgyny of it. I do think that the dress for Angelina is a little too baggy for her. It felt mm-hmm. very loose-fitting. Um, mm-hmm. But I did like that it came with a story. And then her sisters and daughters from Taiwan left messages and images on there so that she could carry that with her. I thought that was a nice little heartfelt moment. Um without being too overly, you know, s- sentimental as the show tends to be. But yeah, I just thought that all three looks really were just, it was like, to, for that to be like the finale of all three was just the chef's kiss. Just amazing. I really love the Rococo uh, Little Boy Blue. Like, it looks so, so good. And what I think makes it so much more special is like the times we've seen really um, fun Rococo um, outfits on the show have been queens like Raja and now Nymphia and such who are like Taiwanese and just like having a completely different race than just someone who is like French. I just, it to me, it makes it so effective and like so much more special and beautiful that you look at it and say like, this just i don't know like i it's an aesthetic that uh obviously doesn't still exist and then what we're wearing but also like transcends us all we're all together i don't know i just i i love the message about that um mm-hmm. i love the story of the second look but i wasn't as crazy about the dress um to be honest and uh I love everything about the last look that she constructed. The issue that I have with it is I don't like the yellow boots with it. I wish it was a different color. I like the length of the boots and I'm sure she didn't have anything else. And it's not so distracting that I felt like, oh, she shouldn't win or whatever. But I did think that because I felt like Q's looks were more consistent across the board of all three of them are really strong. Whereas I felt here we had two really strong and one good um, look, that's the only reason why I felt like Kyushu went over this, but I do think that her constructed look was the best out of everybody's. It, everything that you guys have said, I completely agree with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think it was also such a shock and a surprise because we were set up with almost the Dawn VQ, right? The battle of the mm-hmm. seamstresses. And then we get this little bit of Nymphia being like, yes, I, you know, I am a yeah. seamstress, but it is her being a chaos goblin, a mm-hmm. Spanish messenger pigeon. Like that's her main story from the actual episode. So then to be able for her to bring this to the runway, the wow shock factor that was so unsurprised or that was surprising, I think also for me, just helped to drive it up like it's so sad because it's like oh the, the bar was high for Q so it's like well I expected her to do well she did well great yeah. bar yeah. met but for Nymphia it was like my bar was just lower just because of what we've seen so far which is maybe a little bit unfair but I still can't get over the last look I just I think it's amazing I mean I, do I think, think it's a go ahead go ahead <laughs> jinx go ahead. <laughs> I think it's a testament to um just like how much of like a, a triple threat that I think Nymphia can be. It's like if if you if you are a fantastic seamstress and that's not your main storyline, that means that you got other stuff in store. And then the cherry right. on top is, oh, you made all these looks too. It's like that's why I'm like, I it's looking like who can beat Cynthia or Cynthia <laughs> <laughs> Nymphia at this point. So I mean, we'll yeah. see. We'll see. I also think too that if you have like Isaac Mizrahi being like this is this should be on a runway (laughs) yeah and i know that's pretty much the top hire the bitch hire her please (laughs) okay 
Let's talk about our last queen who was in the top. We're talking about Safira Crystal and her. So Peter, Peter Pumpkin Eater was her mother goose look. And then she did Eve for her significant mother look. So this is one that sort of narrative wise was a surprise to me. But then when I look at all the looks, I'm like, okay, I can see it. I think the looks combined with just her presence. And we hear that a, a lot is she just has such a, an energy, like a commanding energy. I mean, I'm on, I don't know if you felt that when you saw her with her wonderful hat <laughs> but it, it does come across with the way that she presents the looks and i have to say the first look i was like where did this come from how did you yeah. bring this to drag race it's huge it is absolutely huge and it is a gorgeous um we actually had the pleasure of having some of the people that helped um her at the bar um, that I watched at this past weekend and during the commercial breaks. Um, we had the the person that created the pumpkin look was there. And then the person that created that rattlesnake that she has in the Eve look was there. And I forget what the third oh. person did. No disrespect oh. to whatever the third person did. I think she might have just been like a part of like her team. I don't think she made anything mm. um, for any of these outfits. But um, yeah, it was uh, it was really cool to see those people, you know, you know, put a put a face behind all these names of designers that we see that end up that have their show on the or the work on the show. But mm -hmm. this pumpkin, this Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater, oh my God, I love it. I love it because mm -hmm. it's like, it's like, are you Peter or are you the wife that Peter stuffed inside the pumpkin? Is she murdered <laughs> and back from the dead? Or is she like a, a harlot that's about to like, be like, come inside my pumpkin? Like, I don't, it, it's so, <laughs> oh. the stories are everywhere, okay? And I'm here for it. I love the evil look. And I love that Carson said about the constructed look. It's like, you know, it's giving like a little dash of the whiz. I can totally mm -hmm. see that. I can totally mm -hmm. see Dorothy from the whiz in that look for sure. So I just thought that it was it was really, really uh, a strong showing um, for her. And like the construction of that skirt is just like to die for. I love it. I love mm -hmm. it. It's like a pulled up curtain type effect. I love it. Mm hmm. I'm obsessed with the pumpkin look. I want to like take her and make her sit on my yard all Halloween. <laughs> and that's my decoration for my, you know, my, I, I don't, I live in Brooklyn. So I guess that would be really cruel. Here you go. <laughs> just a hand here on the sidewalk. Have fun. Um, but I, I loved everything about that. That feels like it should be, you know, a part of like a Disney show or something like that. It was really yeah. interesting. Um, I love this interpretation of Eve for sure. And like, kind of like reclaiming the idea that the first humans were white when, you know, we know anthropologically that was not the case. Um, so I love, you know, that aspect of it, but I will say that I feel like we've seen this before with Shea Coulee and with, um, Alaska. And with Alaska. So I just kind of sit back and I'm like, okay, I, I, I love it and it looks great but also and also here her breasts look weird again so like there's just something about Safira and breasts <laughs> that are <laughs> like can we get the right size that's proportional um and in this in the right position um uh or maybe it's just that you know that Eve just had the perkiest boobs you ever did see um and <laughs> botch bag one bit she has a baby but guess what those those boobs stayed in place um justice so, for perky boobs <laughs> justice. um and then in the last piece i you know i love this kind of almost essence of like burberry that like have like the pattern that goes mm. through all the way down to like the bottom um but then also having the denim and such on top i i love that um I don't know if I understand all of the watches, uh, but I'm here for it. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't even notice that until you just mentioned it. All of the, <laughs> the three watches. Yeah, I, guess I, it's I don't know. To be like you know, men's wear, men wear watches, men, 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 but it doesn't really go <laughs> with the outfit, I guess. <laughs> but also, like, why not? It's not distracting. It's just like, yeah, I could wear three yeah. watches. This is drag. <laughs> okay, accessory. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We have Plain Jane up next. Where do we start with Plain Jane? I hated the color combination on the first look, the blue and the purple. The set, which, what, hold on. what was her, uh, what was her thing again? Pussycat by the fire. 
Okay. I don't, that's another one. I don't know. Octomom was a very, I actually really thought it was an out of left field, but fun choice to do mm-hmm. Octomom. And I loved, I grabbed the still of when she released the baby and she dropped to the last one. Uh, overall, the look I was not high on, but that I thought was really funny. And I really liked the concept. And then the last look I'm not crazy about either. Um, the tights are, don't really fit the nude illusion for me. Uh, and, um, I, I like that it was just sort of one blazer that she then just kind of cut up, but it it's not really doing it for me. The best part is the kind of like tie over her crotch bit that sort of peeks out. Other than yeah. that, I, I was not personally crazy about these looks. I, somebody tweeted, uh, I love her use of different colors in her looks, the color of her tights, the color of her skin, the color of her foundation. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> and I agree. I think plain Jane should have been in the bottom two this week. I'm sorry. Mm. She is the other person. She's like was nowhere near the bottom. And and I know that part of it was like, obviously, all, all of it was because the queens were voting. But I for a ball challenge, I mm. want gags if they're also going to serve a look. And the second one was just a gag. There was no real look there and i didn't think that that was effective her first one her face is beat but again it's like the the bodice was like too low and didn't Mm, seem like mm -hmm. it didn't seem like anything fit her correctly the colors clash in a way that i don't appreciate the lights make it look red and then there's the purple and the blue it just none of that seemed to work for me except for her face and then the last look, I absolutely hate it. I'm sorry. I like, I, uh, I can't get behind it. Yeah. If you hate it, you hate it. I, I think do. that's totally fair. <laughs> Amon, what about you? Where do you land on her looks? Um, I do not feel like she needed to be talking any types of shit about anybody this week. <sighs> yep. Um, I would have used that immunity if I were her, because I would have. <laughs> It didn't make no damn it. sense for her to be on such a high horse because, like, the nursery rhyme look, okay. Um, I mean, it looks good, but, like, okay. It, it, like, just the cat ears are supposed to give us... What, what is the nursery rhyme? My Little Pussy again? Like, what is it? it was- <laughs> Pussycat by the fire. Oh, we can't be saying My Little Pussy, like... <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Pussycat by the fire... Uh, out of the fire. I mean, okay. And then she like revealed that she was wearing underwear. Like that was supposed to be a reveal. I don't know. It was weird. Um, and yeah. then Octomom. Okay, I guess. I mean, I feel like I would rather have seen you pregnant, but okay. Um, and then the constructed look, as Megami says, looks a little naked, girl. Looks like it's you know, mm-hmm. stop relying on that body, you know. So, mm-hmm. um. Yeah, I don't really know what what was what was going on with her this week because like it wasn't bad by any means, but for her to be talking no, about <laughs> <laughs> for her to be talking all that trash, I was like, girl, for what? What were you mm-hmm. doing? Also, those mm-hmm. cliffhangers, bitch, on that last look, that's distracting. Mm. Her toes hanging. <sighs> Yeah, it just, um, I think it's the, yeah, the combination of the shit talking plus the quality of the looks. It was just last week you could shit talk and you were able to back it up this week. You'd shit talked and you weren't able to back it up. So, but don't get me wrong. That's great television and I'm here for it. So Mm -hmm. what you got next week? You got to shit talk and be in the middle. (laughs) I let's we'll find out. Tsunami Muse uh, is up next, and she nice. has Humpty Dumpty <laughs> for her first look, a significant mother, Candy Muse, <laughs> and then sort of created this little schoolgirl look. Oh, my God. When she dropped the egg in the first one, I thought, thank freaking God, because the combination yeah. works so well. But I thought she was going to be that egg the whole time, and I was so nervous for her. <laughs> not that it's like not... It's not terrible. I just, she walks out and her face was just made me laugh. And I was like, oh my God, no. <laughs> she looks like she's at one of those like photo op things where you stick your head in and it's like, yes. I was, I'm at Humpty Dumpty land or whatever. So <sighs> oh, I love this look. I think it's yeah, so camp. Too. It's so silly. I love that 
uh the the yoke look still has like a little piece of the shell as a part of like as like a fascinator i just loved that and like the little yoke mm-hmm. earrings and everything and the way that it, she just dropped out of it and it kind of just like cracked open i just love the whole thing once again the bar was like yes bitch yes <laughs> um isn't it like the most amazing reveal we see i mean we could have told we could have told you what the fucking reveal was gonna be but it was still fun <laughs> To watch it happen. And whoever said Humpty Dumpty had to be a guy, they never specified any gender, you know? Mm-hmm. Or Humpty Dumpty mm-hmm. could be a guy and loves to be in drag. So who knows? And what? Um, and what about it? Uh, I thought that the Candy Muse um, uh, homage was was great. Um, it was interesting to see that on a slimmer body because we've only mm-hmm. ever seen it on candy so it's just interesting to see how it translates to different body types but I just you know I love when you know people are like showing respect to their elders as it were um so that was fun and I love me some candy muse so you know that's always gonna give me some points um and then I also thought that was it was cool it's kind of giving you know like Hermione Granger after dark a little bit you know what I'm saying like you know. <laughs> like come meet me in the common room by the fire pussy mm-hmm. <laughs> by the fire pussy <laughs> Is that what it's called? Or is pussy cat by the fire? Sorry. Yeah, not, about the, not the fire pussy. That's good. That's giving Lindsay Lohan fire crotch energy. No. Um, <laughs> um, I agree. I think also the chunky heel platform that she's wearing with the like the egg outfit, or the Humpty Dumpty outfit, is just so mm-hmm. good. I think that if she had only had one of those. Um, I don't think it would have been as effective, but both looks coming mm-hmm. together look amazing. I love on the candy illusion that her in the middle, like in like uh between her breasts, she has an X for her tsunami instead of candy, but then the jukebox has the K for candy as the homage there. But I I don't know. I I, I thought that was really fun. And then the last look, I love this, you know, schoolgirl you know, from a porno outfit. Like it, yes. it does look really, really cute on her. I have seen a lot of people who said that she deserved to be in the top and I struggle to put her above Safira, but she was very much on the border for me um, mm-hmm. of being like, she very well was fourth in, in, in my opinion. I think that she did a really great job. Mm-hmm. I think it was because that first look for me was just so strong. Like it was mm-hmm. so good. The combination mm-hmm. of the two. And then it was very cute. I love that she did press play on the, on the boom box. Yeah. Adorable. But the, the last one I think just didn't it like if I'm comparing the last look of Safira's and 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 Tsunami's, Safira's right. wins for me mm-hmm. by a, by a mile. Right. The last, I believe, last queen is Plasma. So P- Plasma with her Tweedledum and Tweedledee look, which we found out in Untucked that Dawn absolutely hated and others agreed with. I'm, and I'm I, here. I yes. think it's because she did the top and bottom instead of them next to each other like it's another head yeah. I, I didn't quite get the why are we doing the vertical i'm on like we have the top head and then her her tummy head <laughs> i don't know crotch head <laughs> yeah i don't understand the interpretation of this um and where's the rattle where's the broken ra- I, like tell the story because i mean clearly she you know, she seems to be one of like the more nerdier about the details types of queens. So I was just interested in why she went with this particular interpretation as opposed to, like you said, like a sort of like a conjoined twin type moment. I felt like that would have been a lot more striking. Um, and the walk was interesting, you know. <laughs> um, I like the Anne Boleyn look. I do think that maybe it could have been just a touch more draggy, like maybe a little glitter somewhere, maybe a little rhinestone somewhere. Maybe a little bit of a, I don't know. Maybe a, you can't really see her shoes, but maybe like a little, maybe a slit and like a heel just to give it a little something, something. Um, but I do, I do appreciate the silhouette of that look a lot. Um, and the constructed look is, it's, it's fine. It's, it's, it's good. It's definitely not the worst of the pack, not the best. Middle of the road, fine. Fine to me. I, I'm still trying to figure out this first look. Um, <laughs> it's it's been almost seventy two hours, and I still can't get it. I I I can't tell. And I did she try to make that tweed? Because that would have been amazing if she had done Tweedledee and Tweedledum with a uh, tweed 
um, jacket. And I think she said something about that. And I've been trying to see if the material really is tweed or not, but it doesn't look like it probably because of the colors used, which if she had done tweed, that's amazing, but I still don't get the twin thing. It, it, I mean, I understand she's trying to do two characters, but it, it just, it's not coming across. It's not effective. Mm -hmm. Her second look does not say drag to me. It says Shakespeare or it says a stage performance. Like, so it doesn't have the dragged up element to it. It just feels like you rented a costume. Um, and I think that that's where I'm kind of losing her on that one because it's gorgeous, but it's something I have seen before, especially if I go to see a, a, uh, a period piece. And then the last bit, um, I don't think she did a, a good job here. Um, I love this, the idea of the silhouette, but she's not effective in making it appear the way she wants to, which is to have the curves and such. It It's a little yeah. too... Yeah. boxy at times it doesn't look well seamed um you can tell that bits are kind of popping out a little bit and again i'm not a seamstress i am not a fashion person this is purely a fan who w loves the show and that kind of thing i felt like there could have been a case for plasma to also be in the bottom this week so we had in my opinion we actually had quite a few people that could have been in the bottom um mm -hmm. Plain Jane and Plasma were two that I was surprised that more people weren't talking about when they did the ratings. I think she benefits from the last look being black or mostly dark colors because some of those details are a little bit lost. Like mm -hmm. in when I first looked at it, I was like, okay, that's cute. And then you start to notice some of those fit issues. And I think it's because she's using non-stretchy fabric, which I want to be good for her sure. for using that. It's much more difficult to work with. But then for the fit, it kind of has to be like just right to, to fit her in that way. So I think that yeah. that was just part of the issue. I, I probably would have put her safe, but... And I do hear the, oh, it's a little bit costumey, the second look for Anne Boleyn. When she first walked out, though, I thought she looked very gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So I'm not I'm not going to critique too much on on what she brought to the table. But when you look at the details, and especially the, the details of the first look, you kind of start to pick at it a little bit more and yeah. you can maybe see some more of the flaws. Yeah. Okay. That does it. We went through all 42 looks. I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm genuinely tired. <laughs> All right. But we still have a few more things to take care of. Of course, that being the lip sync. We have Hershey versus Geneva. Ava Max, maybe you're the problem. Amon, do you think that Hershey deserved to be eliminated here? Yeah. Um, it I feel like Megami just slightly edged her out a little bit here. Um, I don't Geneva? think that either or excuse me, Geneva. Excuse me. <laughs> it was like Megami's um, in the background holding signs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Protect bad drag. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it I was kind of surprised because Hershey was sort of like, you know, talking her stuff, saying like, there's no way that Geneva can outperform me. And I was like, well, I mean, sis, <laughs> looks like she is about to. Um yeah, I just felt like it, it It did sort of feel like she sort of had like a I'm probably going to go home type of energy too, yeah. which I don't think helps. Because, um, I mean, there might have been a world in which, you know, if you slay this lip sync, then yeah, give them a reason to save you. Um, but yeah, it didn't really seem like she had like a lot of fire to, to stay. But, you know. Yeah. I feel like she was never going to be a person who quits to go be with her family, but we did get that teaser that she was really feeling, you know, mm -hmm. the, you know, she was missing her family. She's missing her kids, the whole nine yards. And I kind of felt like she had the defeatist energy. There wasn't the fire and Geneva was mad and brought it. And yeah. just those two things, like somebody was like, once Geneva did that kick, it was over. And I was like, it's not because she did the kick. It's because of the, energy that came with the kick it's the energy that she had when she was saying the words but there were times where um what i loved about hershey's lip syncing is that she was hitting every like uh run with her mouth and doing it really well so technically she was just there but it just the energy felt lacking and that was i i know that hershey's an incredible performer so i wanted to see a little bit more yeah. especially after all the the whip yeah. cracking neck cracking whip thing that she did you know i wanted to see more of that energy and we just we didn't get that 
I don't know if part of it was because she had decided to sort of keep keep the church lady character mm. and that influenced the performance. But for me, it was the fact that Geneva just it, the intensity, the energy I that made me continue to put my eyes on on her. And unfortunately, I do feel like she sort of outperformed her and it matched the energy of the song. So that was more what I wanted Hershey to bring. But yeah. I have to say, I love Hershey's exit line of it's chocolate and then the sound <laughs> so it's cute it works with her name Hershey all of that was was very adorable it's so sad to see her go we lost our first competitor here but unfortunately that's that's the game we're playing we have and to that was not somebody home. I thought was going to be the first boot in any no. capacity going into no. the season no yep but there we are all right, next week we are talking about RDR Live. So sort of an SNL version of Drag Race. I think we've seen so, I mean, we we've seen improv season. challenges like this before, but yes, we've done RDR Live before. So we're bringing it back. Second season, got renewed. We're going to see what the queens have. I love the fact that we're going from a construction ball challenge to this improv acting challenge. Complete 180 going in a different direction. We'll see how the queens fare next week. Whew. Okay. What else? Anything? Anything else either of you would like to mention about the episode before we wrap it up? Uh, I just hope that, uh, you know, Plain Jane is going to put her money where her mouth is next week because it's one thing to, you know, give us drama and give us, you know, shade and all that stuff, you know, for fun. But it's another, like, as we said the last time, sometimes it feels like it's put on because, like, the way that she came for, uh, for Amanda. Amanda just felt so... Like, why? Like, it doesn't, like, Amanda, like, as far as we know, Amanda hasn't done anything to you. So why are you, like, singling her out and only her and being rude about it as well? So we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's funny because we had Safira's comment about Amanda that, like, your personality is so much better than your drag. This felt like Plain Jane's version of it, which definitely was much more cold and biting. But I think that the intent was sort of similar. But at the same time, like, it still is coming across that way and she's communicating yeah. it in such a negative way. And I know that that's been a big part of the discourse about playing Jane and her behavior and what does this mean? And you know, how she's being perceived and, and all of that. And I'm sure that that will continue because I, of course the producers I'm sure are going to love her bringing the fire and bringing the drama and the her and Amanda stuff. I just imagine is going to, continue <laughs> throughout the season and i think yeah. this is what amanda was alluding to in her meet the queens video when she was talking about like check for untucked because some shit's gonna go down mm -hmm. here we go here we are i also think too that people aren't used to like i'm assuming plain jane is just always like this because the way that she talks about morphine and then goes i stand her is mm -hmm. a tone that you would use if you were like, I don't really like her or we don't get along or whatever. And then it, she was like, I'm on morphine stand. And I was like, oh, okay. So I think that that's just how she is. And I'm not even going to say that she's not self-aware. I think that she's fully aware that that's how she is. But it'll be interesting to see, do the queens come around to that or not? And I also think that it's really a good discussion that people have been saying online that, you know, people who are praising plain Jane, but we're giving like candy muse shit or, you know, Lux or, or mistress and all these other people. It's like, let's look at, you know, maybe some of our implicit biases here. Like yeah, what makes mm -hmm. plain Jane better or worse and those kind of things. But you know, she is a white person at the end of the day. How does that play into it? So just something to mm -hmm. consider when we're, when we're watching all this, but regardless, I'm here for the drama. Please keep bringing it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Whew. Deep sigh. We're done. We uh, bad. did it. We did it. Any plugs before we exit? The show? No, you can check me out um, uh, at Augusta Wind 11 on all I'm my on social media. And Amon, what about you? You can find me everywhere at Amon Adwin. A few friends of mine who are not necessarily like RHEP or podcast related. Um, so you wouldn't know any of them, but you would know me. We started a gaming channel where we just game every Sunday. It's called Four Fit Gaming. Spelled like a four because there's four of us. So if you ever want to see me playing random video games with, uh, with a few people, just Love check that. that out on Twitch. Great. And you can find me on Twitter at Liana RHEP. 
just holding the fort down when it comes to Drag Race. And we will be back next week to cover RDR Live, episode four of season 16. If you would love to, which we would love you to do so, leave your shot ratings and reviews for us on iTunes. You can do that at website.com slash drag race. Shout out to the entire RHAP team for all their help behind the scenes. And we'll talk to you all soon. Bye. Thank you.